So while I'm lying there, I'm watching the, the bullets were actually cutting through the scrub and r rubbish, the, the weeds and stuff that was there. They were just, I could see them was and uh, that was that. The next thing I knew, Ginger Benson shouted out, uh, Enfermero, Sanitario, and I've been shot in the foot. So the sergeant, who was on, uh, on the safe side of the hill, he shouted, Shut up, Ginger, you'll give your position away. And Ginger replied, well, if I haven't already given my position away, some basket must have told them where I am. Well, my father, as I say, was a miner, and he was from a large family. And uh, I, I never had it confirmed the numbers in his family. But uh, he was the youngest. He was demobbed in 1918, December 1918. And uh, I believe he tried to go to work as a labourer, but couldn't uh, carry out the work because his lungs were, were ruined with the gas during the First World War. My father, he never ever was well off. As much as he could get would be a packet of woodbine. A five packet of woodbine, tuppence. Uh, and it was no unusual sight to see the postman come round in the morning with uh, blue letters. Uh, summons is to go to court for non-payment of rent. That was the area. I always went to Sunday school every Sunday and uh, it was only when I became 14 that I missed a Sunday because we were playing football which was outside the Sunday school and having played outside the Sunday school, uh, while the, the man who ran the Sunday school, when he passed, uh, I didn't go in. And uh, as a result, I didn't get my prize, because I got a prize every year for Sunday school. But not that year. Uh, I missed a Sunday, so that was me lost out on that. But that ended my religious uh, education anyway. I had no more interest in religion after that. Long before I left school, when I was 11, I, um, one, of the, one of the lads where I, worked, where I lived, he had a, round, a paper round delivering papers and he asked me would I take on his uh, paper round. He was getting older, he was older than me. And I said yes, of course, because any means of making money was to be welcomed. Always in the morning when I would come back from having delivered my papers, I would tell my boss that I was off to look for a job. I used to go, I used to knock on doors to ask for a job. Do you need any boys today, mister? And that was me. Anyway, I came in one Saturday morning from my paper round and the boss asked me, uh, do you still look, still looking for a job? I said, yes. He said, how do you fancy engineering? I said, oh, aye. And he said, well, come back after your paper round tonight 
and see my brother, which I did. And after the paper round on the Saturday night, I went back to the shop and the owner's brother was in the shop and took, he took me in the back shop, talked to me, asked my age and so on. And he then said, uh, how did I fancy engineering this? Yes. And he said, Boyd's. <laughs> and when he said Boyd's, I nearly collapsed because I had heard my father often talk disparagingly about Boyd's, that it was a scab shop and they had no trade union there. And my father would often, when the subject would crop up, he would say, oh, scab shop. And that was all, it went, the two went together, Boyd's and scab shop, in his language. So that was it. So when the, when the man said, do you fancy engineering? And then he said, Boyd's. I, I just had to go through with it because I had said yes. At night uh, and uh, in free time, when people would come round the streets shouting through the megaphone uh, to aid Spain, the uh, and give non-perishable foods and money towards the Spanish cause. That's where I started uh, trying to help collect the money in the tenements. Like as the man would come round shouting through the megaphone and people would come to their window and they would say, come up here, I would be one of those who went upstairs to their door to either collect a tin of condensed milk, tin of sardines or, or uh, anything that they were donating. Going to the cinema, um, you would see the newsreel. Well, the newsreel was changed twice a week. And uh, seeing these people being bombed and the women running with their bairns in their arms and so on, it was, uh, and the buildings being bombed also. Uh, that's where my politics, if you like to call it that, that's where my politics was. Uh, uh, nurtured. And then came the time when uh, just collecting money or food uh, was not enough. And it happens that when I was 18, I was at a dance. In those days, uh, it was common for dances to be for uh, both sexes would go independently to a dance and the men would sit on one side of the hall women or girls on the other side and that's how it was but it happens it was a communist dance this dance was run uh, by the communist party uh, in the district and uh, it happens that I saw the organiser of the Communist Party in the dance hall one night and so I, sp I saw him and spoke to him and asked him uh, was there any chance of me by joining the International Brigade and he asked me some questions about age and so on. 
And the result was there, he, he decided to come and see my, pa my mother. My father was dead by that time. And I was there with my pal. And when I went back to my seat, I told him, I said, I've just volunteered for the International Brigade. Oh, he said, tell him I'll go. I said, no, tell him yourself. So he went over and told him he wanted to go. And uh, finished up that he came to see his parents on the Sunday morning uh, and my mother on the Sunday morning. And from that Sunday morning, uh, the following Saturday, we were in Paris uh, as a result of how things had gone. Um, he, I was, as I say, I was 18 and my pal Gauntlet was 19. It's, it's not easy for me at this distance to talk about reasons for anything because you just do things. But anyway, uh, and it certainly wasn't political reasons. And uh, the illustration of that is that in Spain, in the different brigades and uh, battalions and companies, now and again there would be a, a political meeting uh, to discuss anything of any uh, common interest. And uh, usually there would be political meetings there. And uh, I would attend in the same way as everyone else. But when I attended these political meetings in, in Spain, the, the, they used to argue, they, they, would, they would have all their political arguments to and fro. And uh, as I have said many times that these people were quoting Lenin and Marx by the yard uh, uh, to back up what they were uh, saying. And I used to sit there and wonder uh, about how knowledgeable these people were that they were able to quote all these um, phrases and sen sentences to and uh, theories. And I, I told myself, uh, I realised then that I knew nothing about politics and I thought, well, I'll have to become a, I'll have to learn about politics because I, I know nothing about politics. After I came home, as I say, having made my mind up, uh, I became politicised, <laughs> if, that's a, if that's such a word. Not easy to say why you do anything. Uh, I mean, you, you do something and you, you gradually become more and more committed. And that's about the size of it. I never had any doubts about what to do.